We've all had the experience where we've had to hide our feelings, cover them up. We come away from that experience feeling that our feelings are the real us. And the side that's said to cover it up is coming from outside. And so we tend to identify with our feelings more than almost anything else. We forget the Buddha's analysis, feelings. For us, feelings would probably come under the aggregate of fabrications. Our emotions would be more like fabrications than they are, like the Pali term for Vedana, which is just a feeling tone. We forget how fabricated they are, how conditioned they are. And the fact that there's a feeling in the mind right now doesn't mean that it's the real you, or that it should be there, or that it's actually helpful, or that it's anything you really want to identify with. So one of the skills we develop as meditators is to learn how to change our feelings. This comes under right effort. You generate desire to have skillful mind states. So if the feeling, if your emotion is an unskillful one, you should have the desire to want to get rid of it. And you want to learn how to identify with that desire for the time being. In realizing the Buddha's analysis that what we have here is a combination of past karma and present karma. It's not the fact that a feeling is there and it's got to be there. There's an influence from the past. And then there are the skills or lack of skills that we have in the present moment that can turn the feeling into something skillful or not. And so here we're working on our skills. The Buddha pairs feelings with perceptions as the big mental fabricators. In other words, the things that shape our state of mind. And so you have to look at your perceptions. We get practice with this as we work with the breath. Ask yourself what kind of breathing would feel really good. Now, how do you perceive the breathing? Could, do you perceive it in a way that prevents it from feeling good? Think of it as something that's going through your nerves, down through your blood vessels, down to the tips of the toes. Not so much the quantity of air that comes in and out of the lungs, which tends to get mechanical. But think of a flow. And you're not outside doing the squeezing or the pulling. You're in the midst being bathed by the breath sensation, simply letting it come in, letting it go out, and directing it simply with a thought, longer or shorter, deeper, more shallow. And if you don't find the breath refreshing, ask yourself, what, what's getting in the way? What needs to be refreshed in the body right now? What's not getting the refreshment at once? Can you think of the breath helping with that spot? If you're feeling dissatisfied with the sensations in your body right now, well, what can you do to change them? And first, you've got to analyze, where is the problem? What's the dissatisfaction coming from? What's feeling starved of breath energy? And make a survey. Go around the body. Go to the spots that you don't normally focus on. And allow them to open up. It's good to perceive the breath and breath meditation not so much as a chore, but as an opportunity. It's like when you go camping. You can think of all the hardships that you're putting yourself under, and you can make yourself miserable that way. Or you can realize how liberating it is to be away from society. With your only bathroom, a hole in the ground. Your source of water, a spring. And 
looking around, you don't see anybody telling you what to do. In other words, learn to focus on the positive side of the experience, and you make it enjoyable. I realize, of course, there are negative signs and positive signs. Why focus on the negative? There's so much negativity in the world as it is. Learn to focus on the positive. What's already getting satisfied, say with the breath as you breathe in, breathe out. And what potentials you have for satisfying other parts of the body. Look at it as an opportunity. You don't have a deadline. You don't have crazy people telling you what to do. You're away from human society. The Johns will often tell their meditators, just tell yourself you're the only person sitting here in the sala. And even though there are other people around you, you don't have to worry about them. That's as if they weren't there. So if you'd like your awareness to spread out and just to fill the whole sala and say, I can take this whole sala as mine, that's perfectly fine. It gives you a little more space. And you've got the sense of the body surrounded by space. Then you're going to ask yourself, where is there tension in the, the way you hold the body right now? Can you release the tension? Try to sit straight and ask yourself which muscles in the body are pulling you out of a nice, comfortably straight posture. Relax those muscles. Get into the details. The reason the breath seems mechanical is because you're not really sensitive to what you're doing. You're not giving it your full attention, your full sensitivity. Think of it as listening to a piece of music far away, a piece of music you'd like to hear, but it's far away. So you make yourself really quiet and really sensitive. And you can learn how to be a connoisseur of the breath. And at the same time, you begin to realize the power of perception. And you get a different sense of the voices in the mind, the ones you want to identify with and the ones you don't want to identify with, realizing that they're all part of you, so you have the choice. As I said, the, the voice that tells you to hide your feelings often sounds like somebody else coming from outside. But the voice that tells you to change your feelings, you can learn how to identify with that. That's an important part of you. There was a famous physicist, Richard Feynman, who did a lot of work on quantum mechanics. But he also liked to play the bongo drums. And he received a letter from a fan one time saying how much they liked to know that he played the drums, made him human. Well, he wrote a letter back saying, look, isn't physics part of humanity? Isn't it a part of the human mind, human psyche, human desire to want to understand things? In other words, the uncontrolled desires we have are part of our human mind. But the desire to get them under control, that's also part of our human mind, the part that sees consequences. It wants to figure out how to do something skillful and to make yourself want to do something skillful. That's really wise. As the Buddha said, the Customs and the noble ones are not simply to develop skillful qualities and abandon unskillful ones. It's to take delight in developing skillful qualities and abandoning unskillful ones. Make it your sport. 
to step back from your emotions, step back from your feelings, if they're negative. And see if you can work your way around them, transform them into something better. You've got the breath here. You've got the ability to talk to yourself. You've got your feelings and perceptions. All these things that Buddha said count as fabrication. And the skill of meditation is learning how to fabricate a good state of concentration. We've got the instructions in the Buddha's inst instructions on right mindfulness. This is how you do concentration. You focus on the body in and of itself, putting aside greed and distress with reference to the world. So, and part of that is rejoicing the fact that you don't have to worry about the world outside right now. Taking delight in that fact. You've just got your body sitting right here. You can give it your full attention. There are no devices beeping at you, no screens to pull your attention away. And so you can really have the chance right now to get to know the body as it feels from within. Just the body in and of itself, the breath in and of itself. Stay with it and ask yourself what would be a way of breathing, a way of relating to the breath, a way of perceiving the breath that would allow a sense of ease to flow through the body. When it says you want to get the body saturated with a sense of ease and well-being, you want your awareness to fill the body. So you've got body, awareness, feelings all taking up the same space, able to stretch their legs, stretch their arms. They don't have to be confined to a particular timetable, a particular space. They can open up because the world is not impinging on them. You're not pulling the world in. And so the sense of the body, as you feel it from within, it tends to get trampled on, tends to get pushed off to the side, and it gets stunted. We're not really that familiar with it. So here, giving you the chance to fill up your awareness, and to give your you're able to give your full awareness to it. When the body and the mind meet with a sense of fullness, that's when you can settle down. And it feels good to settle down. You've allowed yourself to relate to the body in a new way. Relate to the idea of being in a path in a new way. You look after the path. In other words, you look after the body as you experience it right now. You don't have to worry about where it's going to take you. You do your job well here, it's going to take you someplace good. You don't have to keep glancing down to the end of the path to ask yourself, how much longer is it going to be? You're here right now, free to be here right now. So learn to appreciate this opportunity, learn how to appreciate the raw materials that you have to work with. And they'll show you their potential. 